Cape York is a remote peninsula in northern Queensland, Australia, and is only accessible by vehicle during the dry season, May to November. We're starting off around 200 k's from the top at Bramwell Station, and the plan is to try and follow the Olive River as far east as we can. From there, we're going to head north and actually do a bit of the old telly track on our way to the Jardine. Heading west, we're going to investigate some World War II history out at Mutty Heads, and then heading east, we'll tackle the track out to Usher Point. It's a jam-packed trip we've planned, and I can't wait. Hey, that's a freshie. Yeah. yeah. His leads are still green as. Greenies. Yeah, I wonder what happened. Could be lightning or something. She's had a big crunch. Maybe it's just old age. Maybe it just got tired. Maybe it just fell over. Possibly the rain. Softened the, ground. softened the ground. Possibly. It hasn't got much of a root ball on it, so it might be old. But, guys, however it got here, we've got to get around it, I think. I think we're going to be better off going around than trying to get through. Send the tractor through and then we'll follow. <laughs> Easy peasy. Oh, there's the bottom of the tree. It's a big fella. And I'm through. Ah, Kenno's made easy work of it. This must be the olive, guys, coming down the bottom of the hill. Going down, down, down. I bet you she's a croc bit. Feels a bit crocodilian-y. Yeah, this water's a nice, uh, nice shade of brown with deep holes. Wow, it's beautiful in here, though, isn't it? Never get tricked by the beauty up here, though. It can be a very clever disguise for what lies underneath. Very pretty, isn't it? It does look very crocky, though. Especially up to the left there. Big holes. Travelling around Australia, we get to see some spectacular campsites. It doesn't mean we get to camp there, though. Because we always push on a little bit further well, it wasn't really a campsite, it was just a little clearing. And we needed that because the rest of the track was just thick scrub each side. So the next clearing we found, it was time to make camp. Uh, it was a bit tight in places, there was trees and stuff everywhere. We made a good fire, had a good feed. Hey guys, we're... Uh... Heading on through to Elliot Falls for a nice little swim. Swim? I didn't think swimming was advisable up here. There's crocs and stuff. Ah, uh, she's all good, mate. Uh, Elliot's real good tourist country. It's uh, great for a bit of swimming. Uh, so what you're saying is if there was a croc there, it wouldn't be hungry anyway because it would have already taken a tourist. I don't think these crocs ever think there's too many tourists, can I? How refreshing was that, guys? That was beautiful. Oh, it was unreal, but uh, don't know about the wildlife. Looked a bit funny. Yeah, I reckon. OK, well, look, we're uh, heading north. I want to get up to Muddy, but um, before we do that, we're just going to take another one of those little detours. Yeah, I know the type. Ones that take three days. We're only going to do one little section of the old telly, so we chose a really pretty bit. We had to get out of there. We had to get off the old telly, as much fun as it was, and get to the ferry, because it shuts at 5 p.m. But we had Sir Ruth with us. You know what that means? That means he gets whatever he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants. The guys on the ferry were packed up, but they unpacked the whole lot, unlocked it, fired up the ferry. Ruthie, you know, waved his pearlers at him, and we got the trip across that we wanted. Great blokes, eh? John cooked up a special meal for me. Well, here we are at Mooty Heads, and um, it's Glenno's 42nd birthday today. So it's kind of a special day, very special day, especially seeing as we haven't got anything to give him for his birthday, because he kind of sprung it on us. Yeah, cheers, mate. Here's to being 42. Mate, oh, yeah, I was there last year myself. I was going to put vegetables in it, but then I thought, no. That's Glenn's birthday. <laughs> Glenn's Don't birthday. Don't want to ruin I won't it. do that to him. <laughs> I'm putting in just a couple of kilos of chopped up breast chicken. 
Glenno's always told me that when it comes to chicken, he's a real breast man. So um, in it goes. And you're probably sitting there going, gee, this is never going to work. But hey, if you've followed our cooking segments for a while, you'll know that that's a fairly common thought. And it usually does work. Don't ask me why. I'm about to uh, put in some orange marmalade because this is the stuff that Glenno likes to have on his toast at breakfast. So, now there's one more thing that Glenno really likes, and that's a big serving. That is about eight kilos. We're really looking for an opinion on this. So, um, oh, yes. it might need to cool down a little bit. <laughs> I'll just get you a little bit to start with. Well done, John. Thank you very much, everybody. 42 stew works. Yep. And for my birthday tomorrow, mm. what, I'll <laughs> <laughs> what I'll have... <laughs> Glenno's 42 stew. The only problem is we're not going to be able to have it again. You know why? Why? Because he'll never be 42 again. It's all right, mate. Next year we're going to have Glenno's 43 stew. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll put something else in it. <laughs> Big rib on the bone or something. <laughs> rib on the bone stew. <laughs> hey guys, here's the uh, turn off to Usher Point. She's a rough old track though. I haven't been here for years, but um, I'm thinking it's probably not a whole lot better than it used to be. John said that we were going to Usher Point. I'd never been there before. I had been on the East Coast, but not up there, so I was excited to see what it was going to be like. Word on the track has always been that it's a slow one. You know, sometimes you don't even get all the way in. It can take three, four, five hours, and you can be knocking through the bush and all sorts of stuff. And a lot of the local guys would rather just take a quad halfway in and hop on the quad and do the rest. And the track, I think, was about uh, 30, 40 odd kilometres long. We thought we were going to be in for a big ordeal towards the last half of it. But in the last couple of years, it's been graded. There was one whoop up, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it a whoop up, because that's the noise I make when my wheels are. 10 feet in the air, you know. It's Flex It Friday, Glenno, so flex it, mate. Get the air, Friday. That was a mono. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you had about a metre under your driver's side front too, can I? Time to give it the berries. Maybe not for you, Glenno. Let's see if Kenno can push through with the trailer on the back. Oh, here he comes. There he stops. I'm not surprised. This is soft sand we're dealing with. OK, Kenno, you good to go? Ready, mate. Foot on, brake, handbrake on. First gear, engine turned off. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. All right, mate. Three, two, one. Let's go. Now, if there's any truck you choose to have pulling you out of a bog, it has to be Glen 79, doesn't it? It's like Land Cruiser made love to a roo. Ah, uh, if you get what I mean. I'm dragging you, mate. Well, I just hit second and she went under 500 revs. I can't believe it kept going. That thing's a powerhouse. camped up here on top of the headland in Cape York. It's blown about 50 knots. The wind's actually hammering through. Uh, the actual trailer itself is bucking around in the wind, uh, but the canvas and the poles are holding up quite well so far. I just got to sit the night out here and see how we go. The East Coast this time of year, it's always windy, you know, even without has been and his chilli beans. But it was particularly windy where we chose to camp. Oh, it could be worse, it could be windy! I was rudely awoken at 8 a.m. in the morning. How could I sleep through such wind, they reckon? Everyone was whinging and carrying on. They couldn't sleep. And they had to jump in their cars and they thought their camper trail was going to roll over or their awnings fell down. 
I slept like a baby that night. I got a big root system for eight. Whoa! Gee, that sounds good. Okay, now that it's all chopped up, is it my turn? My big concern with the creek crossing was simple, and that is the, the three vehicle rule. In a place like this, this is what happens, you know? You bung one over, two over, the third one, the mud's all shimmied up, bingo, you're bogged. Can't see. <laughs> I think I saw a Hilux in amongst all the water. I think I'm going to do this. Well, you can hide, because that bit might you can fight out. Well done, Ken, eh? 